trailer hitches. Man, can they be confusing. Stick around for a little bit and hopefully I'll help you understand them a little bit better. And if you see this on your trailer, you're going to need a trailer ball. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is just called a trailer coupler. It doesn't sound very official, but I think that's the actual name of this style of hitch. And if you see this coupler, you still just need a trailer ball. It just has a different latch mechanism up top. And even this style is still just a trailer ball. Once again, the only difference is the latching mechanism. If your trailer tongue looks like this, it's still just a ball mount. This piece squeezes close over the ball, and this coupler slides forward. This is a lunette ring. If your trailer has this, you'll need a pintle hook. And if your trailer tongue looks like this, you just need a draw bar or a ball mount to drop a pin through. If you're wanting to tow a trailer, hopefully your tow rig's got one of these. It's going to make your life a heck of a lot easier. This is a 2-inch receiver. Let's go look at some stuff that'll fit into it. Now let's start with the most common, the humble trailer ball. These things come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. This one here is a 2-inch. This is an inch and 7 eighths. This one over here on this drop hitch is a 2 and 5 sixteenths. I've got another one over here, 2 inch. Or I've got the good old tri ball that has all three built into one. Now, how the heck do you know what you need? Well, to determine that, you're going to need to look at your trailer coupler. You should see something similar to this on there. You can see this one says 2 inches and it says 6,000 pounds. Meaning, it can tow a 6,000 pound trailer with a 2 inch ball. This one here is also a 2 inch ball, but you'll notice it says 3,500 pounds. Now this is where it gets even more confusing. The shank, the threaded portion on this hitch is larger than it is on this hitch. So even though you have the right size ball, you need to make sure it's rated for enough weight to pull the trailer. The smallest ball is an inch and 7 eighths. Then 2 inch, then 2 and 5 sixteenths. If you have a few different trailers and you have the luxury of adjustable hitches on the trailer, then get yourself a tri ball. You've got inch and 7 eighths, 2 inch, and 2 and 5 sixteenths all in one handy package. It's a lot easier than having this whole mess in the back of the truck. Now let's talk about receiver tube size. This here is a 1 inch hitch, meaning it's 1 inch square. This is a 2 inch. You can tell because it's two inches square. They also make a two and a half. I don't have that. This is really pretty easy. Just look at whatever's on the back of your vehicle by the same hitch that fits it. Let's move on to pintles. Now, if you've got a pintle, you're probably pulling a pretty heavy duty trailer. This here's a pintle hook. The lunette ring goes around this portion here and then you drop the upper jaw around it, locking it in place. So on the pinto hook, the pinto hook itself actually does the locking, whereas the trailer coupler, for a trailer ball, the coupler does the locking. Pinto hook. Now this thing here is rated for 20,000 pounds. Like I said, most of you are probably never going to need something like this. That's pretty overkill. And actually the trailer that I have that has a lunette ring on it, wouldn't even come close to 20,000 pounds. I don't know why it's got a lunette ring on it, but it does. The third style you might see, which I don't think is even legal to pull over the road, is that ag style or clevis type hitch, where you need a just a bare ball mount, such as this, and the clevis on the trailer will just slip right over this and you'll drop a pin straight through there. Much like the back of a tractor, or like the back of your riding mower, ATV, UTV, something along those lines, you'll see this kind of hitch on there a lot. So now that you've decided if you need a ball, just a ball mount, a pintle hook, and you've decided is your hitch one inch or two inch, there's still one more thing to figure out. How much drop or raise do you need? And by that I mean, this here is a drop hitch. This here, I guess technically is a drop, but you can see this one here drops significantly more than this one. Here, for fair comparison, let me get two two-inch hitches. These are both two-inch hitches. You can see, I'm holding the tubes level. You can see the one is significantly lower than the other. Or, if you need to write a rise hitch, you just flip this over, or flip this over, and you would put your ball on the other way. Essentially, you just need to back your tow vehicle up to your trailer, 
get your trailer level and do some measuring. Measure from the bottom of the receiver tube to the ground. Measure from the top of the trailer coupler that's going to go over the ball to the ground. And then you can calculate you know, how far of a drop you need, if you need to flip this over and you actually need a rise hitch. Like I said, it can be quite confusing. And hello, I've got several different variations of hitches here. Especially when you start talking the two inch and one inch, then you start getting drops and raises and all sorts of things in every stinking hitch and it can start to add up. Now, you'll also see plates like this. This happens to have a pin to hook on it currently, and this is a nice one. You saw my other one, I had the little pin I had to pull out and fart around with. This one just has a button on the side, you push the button and pull the lock up. That easy. It's a really nice one. Anyway, you'll see some hitches like this. Slides into your tube, it's got this big flat plate welded on it, and that allows you to adjust the coupler up and down to whatever height you need. And of course there's other things you can put in your receiver, like recovery loops. This here I actually made for a one inch receiver hitch that I had but I had a two inch cargo carrier and I welded this in the top so when not in use the cargo carrier stood vertically behind the vehicle and then I could put it in down here when I was using it. Worked out really nice. There's all sorts of things you can put in your receiver hitch. While it can seem daunting at first you're gonna want to figure it out before you try and pull a trailer because if you take a trailer that needs a ball this size and put it on one this size, odds are it's gonna come unhooked and that's a ride you don't want to take. Hopefully I didn't make this more confusing than it already was. If I did, I'm sorry. Please ask questions if you have any. Drop down in the comments to let me know. Hopefully I can help out. I'll link some stuff like this tri-ball and uh, this pendle hook here in my Amazon store. I'll put that in the description. If you do buy anything through that link, I do get a small commission from Amazon. And any money that I get from there just goes right back into the channel. Um, if you do purchase something through there, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.